Should I now? Cool. And we're going to turn into a Sonic Youth concert right at the end. A lot of reverb. So when you hear that happening, you'll know what phase of the agenda we're on. This is today's agenda. We're going to talk about channel creation. Today's, uh, by the way, if you want to question if you're in the right place, it's about YouTube channel creation. Everybody here? Good, good. Okay. I'm Sean. Uh, I've been in tech for uh, since... My first tech job, I was a Y2K programmer. Anybody remember that problem that was going to end the world? Yeah, turns out we did a good job. Uh, today we're going to talk about the mechanics of creating a YouTube channel, which will take a very short period of time. And then we'll talk a little bit about the resources we have available, because this community has an amazing palette of resources uh, at your fingertips within walking distance of this building that are phenomenal. When you go and you, and you see what they have here, uh, it's, it's going to blow your mind because what's available is an incredible amount of software and hardware resources, uh, studio spaces, anything that you wanted to do. So let's start with the easy part and talk about how to create a YouTube channel. If you have any questions, just shout. Uh, or if you just feel the need to express at a high decibel level, just shout. Just get that out of there. You'll feel better. We'll feel better. Okay, YouTube channel creation. Everybody here have a YouTube account. If you don't have a YouTube account, you need a YouTube account. To get a YouTube account, all you need is a Gmail address. A million years ago when YouTube was invented, you could use any email address. And then, you know, a year later, they sold it to Google for $1.65 billion, which is pretty good for a one-year-old product. And shortly thereafter, they changed it to Google addresses only so that Google could maintain that, you know, all the way across its horizontal boundary. Once you get that, let's get out of here and we'll just I'm gonna pull a chair over, be real informal. And we'll just talk about how to create a YouTube channel. Okay, so say, everybody can see that? Good. You get your Google email, you come to YouTube, you do the sign in, uh, it, there's, there's a button up in the right corner, you don't see it because I've already got this account set up, but there's a sign in button, you click that, it asks if it's for your personal or for your business, uh, even if you're vlogging or producing a channel, uh, unless it is Unless it is your, your company account, I would keep it personal. Uh, it may grow into a business, but there are different rules around the business YouTube settings than the personal YouTube settings. So click, it's your personal account, and then you have this. Now, to create the channel, you come up here in the corner where your icon is. This will have your little picture in there if you've got your Google profile set up. And then it's quite easy to create a channel. And that's how you'll appear. Click that button. Ta-da. We now have the Vincent Crutes YouTube channel. When you do the upload video, anything that you've saved on your machine or into some cloud account, you can upload that and put that on there. So that's the creation part. Any questions? Oh, right on. <laughs> All right. This guy gets it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Account. I think you can. I have not tried that. Yeah. You may have to have separate emails, now that I think about that, with the rules that they have. So you'd have to have separate emails and separate accounts. Yeah, she would know. Thank you. Thanks for the backup. We're giving you an assist on this one. Yeah, uh, as I think about it, because each, each one is going to be referencing one email. So, but you could split the channel if you wanted, but you can't do multiple channels on one. Yeah. We're going to talk about that next week. That's going to be the final class on how to get paid. It's to Zach and Pazapa. That's what we're going to 
it's a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time before you start getting monetized okay so that's how you create a channel we're all clear So resources. Right now in this library, uh, are you guys familiar with the library, what it was before they, before they added this incredible extension? And it was a pretty amazing library. I think, I hope we can all agree. Now, this library is routinely re referred to as one of the best libraries in the world. Uh, when, they, when they did a lot of this stuff, they sent uh, kind of fact-finding missions to other libraries, even in other countries, very progressive Scandinavian libraries. Hey, come on in. Uh, and they've tried to amalgamate a lot of those features. So what we have now is this amazing library, 750-seat auditorium next door, uh, all the resources that we already had, this brand new children's space, and in between that, we have the CFI, the Center for Innovation. And in there, there are the laser printers, the laser etchers, uh, arts and crafts supplies, massive plotter printers. They have a giant cricket over there if you guys want to cut out patterns. And importantly, with our subject of YouTube, they have lights, tripods, microphones, a green room, portable background green screens, and a soundproof podcast room, if that is the direction you want to go. So you can use the uh, space here for everything except your video camera. They do have cameras there in the photograph, uh, in the photography lab, uh, which is another innovative part of that innovation. but they couldn't guarantee that they would always have one in stock and that they would have the appropriate video equipment that you might need. But with a phone, you know, a lot of these guys on YouTube, there are a lot that are using iPhones or, I mean, the, it's the whole gamut from DSLR cameras to, to high-end phone cameras, but really the camera's not gonna be uh, maybe the issue and we're about to get around that. But here they also have an editing center. So you can, in the old days, they would spool tape and they would run through it frame by frame and edit it and snip it out. Now you just layer the video and audio as you want to and, and there is a screen that you're watching and you can manipulate the video feed almost like it's frame by frame like film. They have one over there that you can use. Yeah. That's kind of amazing. Secondly, 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 whoops, wrong one. We are here. I don't need to update that right now. We're right here. Right here is the Fayetteville Access Television Center. Have you guys ever been up there at Rock and Block across the street from the cop shop? Did you know we have a community access television station here in Fayetteville? Two different channels and it streams on YouTube. So you can go up there, use their stuff as well. Now, cool thing, that's free. You do have to sign up. I'm going to show you the website here in a second. They have a whole videography course up there. And before you can use their equipment, you do have to take the course on that equipment. So very basically, they have shoulder-mounted camera with a like a boom microphone. But they will also, and, and they check all this stuff out. So again, this is free of cost. You could, you could walk into Fayetteville and just start your channel not even having a phone, OK? You can check out computers here. There's editing here. There's green room here. Or you can go over there. They will teach you how to use the camera, then check a camera out to you. Oh, I don't want to use a camera, I want to use my phone. Well, they have a gimbal. You ever seen one of those? It 
keeps your phone steady. So it's got little gyros on it, and it does this so that your phone is always straight up and down. They'll teach you how to use that and then check that out to you. They have a green room studio over there with the great big cameras, like on the nightly news. They have, what else do they have that's really neat? They have like a top of the line video editing system that you can go over there. You have to take that class. They don't let you play with any of their equipment. And I think we can all see why. It's a community resource. They don't let you play with their equipment until you've taken the class. But once you've taken the class, uh, there's this, I haven't used the one here. I've used that one over at Cat TV. Uh, you can layer video and audio, video and video. So you, you know, as you do a fade from one scene, you can bring something else up. You can put in narration over your ambient, uh, the ambient audio tracks on, on your video. It's a really cool place and they're really nice guys. They have a schedule of classes. I'm gonna show you that website here in a second. They have a schedule of classes, you have to take that class to use that equipment, but once you can then use that equipment, then uh, sky's the limit because it's all free. It's freezies. Ma'am. I don't remember. We'll have to check. And Boy, I, I cannot answer that. Okay. Can't answer that. But it was, uh, it was wicked cool, I can tell you that. I went straight slow-mo. My videos suddenly looked like I was an action adventurer. Yeah, it was awesome. The only thing you will need uh, when you go over there, they don't provide this, the, whatever media you're gonna save on. So you'd need like uh, some kind of card you know, to save your material or some kind of tape. Ma'am, you can put it on a USB drive and they actually ask you if you're coming in to use the, and this was a couple of years ago when I went through that, so it might have changed. Uh, they ask you to bring your material in on a USB drive because that way you can just you know, plug into the side of their editing computers and edit that way. They don't really want you to save, and again, common resources, this makes good sense. They don't want you to save a bunch of your stuff. You know, video files can get huge quick. They don't want you to save a bunch of their, your stuff on their machines. Uh, that muddies the water, so I think we can all understand that as well. Yeah. So, that class up there, let's look, and I will show you what I mean. So, within our city government website, there is a, there is a page for uh, our Fayetteville Public Television. And what all do they teach? Besides the basic class, which is an orientation on their system and on the basic hardware and software, then they go through studio directing, technical directing, studio audio, studio camera and lighting, floor directing and studio crew. And if you take that, if you take that studio, I know this is a YouTube specific class, but that's kind of a neat place up there. If you take that class, then you can volunteer uh, because as people use our community studio up there, uh, they kind of need volunteer crew members. Uh, and it's got the full panoply of theater lights and microphones everywhere. You can do a lot with it. And it's a full green screen room. And they'll even put green screen floor down. You could, you could deliver your cast from, you know, erupting Vesuvius. Personal ambition. Might have shared too much. And then finally, they have two, uh, some advanced classes, how to direct and uh, produce, and how to use that green screen room, which I haven't used. But it, it's really cool, and, and you, uh, you'll have to go see it. But there's just green screen on a big spool, and you just roll it out so that you can project whatever you want on the green screen. Kind of cool. You don't want to wear that hat, though, because then someone could project onto your green hat. There's a weatherman back east who wears a green tie one day, like one day a month or something and asks people to green screen on his tie. So if you ever get a chance to see that weather forecast, it'll blow your mind. Who knows what's going on in that tie. So those are our two big resources. And they would defray, 
again, you know, there's a barrier to entry whenever you try a new hobby. In this community, there's really no barrier to entry because there's all kinds of free equipment and stuff that's just available for your use. Uh, where'd I go? Those are my first two things I want to talk about today. Uh, just the very easy click, there's a channel. And then these are our resources, which would really simplify your journey because, you know, some of that equipment, a microphone, just, just a microphone so you have clarity on, on sound. That can be a several hundred dollar investment or a trip to the library. So kind of cool that we have all this stuff here in Fayetteville. I'm going to open for questions real quick and kind of get a sense what you want to talk about today and what your thoughts are, what your ambitions are, because that interests me as well. So anybody who wants to start or, or no one who wants to start, that's good too. I'll tell you my idea for the next YouTube thing I'm doing. Uh, Arkansas is an amazing place. I think, how are you doing? I know you. Yeah, yeah how are you? Good. Arkansas is an amazing place. Uh, we, in Arkansas, we do things that that really are very uncommon. You know when you live someplace, it's normal? No matter what's going on, it's normal. James Joyce said that he couldn't write about Ireland while he lived in Ireland because he lived in Ireland and it was just normal. But then when he left Ireland, he was able to look back at Ireland and go, well, that was crazy. I'm from Missouri, and when you live in Missouri, you're like, yeah, everywhere there's gonna be potholes as big as a refrigerator and a major thoroughfare through a city. That's just how things are, and then you move here and they take your tax money and then they repair the roads and you don't have that problem. You think, that place is horrible. Here in Arkansas, for instance, more than 50% of all rice grown in this country is grown in this state. Did you guys know that? Yes. Dang it. Well done, you. He's from that, he's from that spot. Yeah. Yeah. And they've only been growing it here about 110 years. Before it was Louisiana, but now we grow more rice than some whole economies just in this state. You can do a lot of stuff with rice. You can make rice wine or you know anything that keeps it as rice. You can introduce amylase and make a rice syrup that's used all over Asia as a sweetener. You can just do some crazy stuff with it. So one of my ideas is to go around uh, our amazing state and show stuff that, that's just not common in the US. They raise very little rice in Missouri. None. <laughs> Little Rock has the second largest peanut butter factory in the United States. Did you guys know that? Okay, because I'm going to keep blowing your minds with Arkansas facts. Skippy has their, their, uh, their only production facility is in Little Rock. Yes, ma'am. I am trying to get into that factory. They won't let me in. They don't do tours of that factory for whatever reason. Yeah. Maybe. They pretty much didn't want to talk long on the phone. Just, I'm trying to process that. I'm trying to be strong. Second largest uh, peanut butter factory. Do you know where we rank in the states that produce peanut butter or produce peanuts where we are? Yeah, dead last. Yeah, we produce almost no peanuts. We got this giant peanut factory here. So all the Skippy that you see was made in Little Rock. Anywhere you see Skippy, it, it came from your home state. Kind of cool. Any guesses on where the largest peanut butter factory is? In the world, not just the US? That's what I would have thought too, because that makes good sense. Because Georgia produces more peanuts than any other state in the union. Arkansas doesn't because they only have 11,000 acres under, uh, under cultivation with peanuts. As you can tell, I got pretty excited by this whole peanut butter question. <laughs> it's Lexington, Kentucky. You know how many peanuts they raise in Kentucky? Yeah. Nobody does because it's like none. But Jif has their factory there, and that's the largest peanut butter manufacturer on earth. They have two. They have one here in Lexington, Kentucky, and one in Shenzhen, China. Because if you have something you're going to make, might as well open a factory in Shenzhen, China. Yeah. 
good distribution angles. Do you know we have an alligator season in Arkansas? Did you know that? You didn't know that? Yeah, you can, you can legally hunt alligators. You'd think it was down south. Did you guys two months ago see that they found a, a rather sizable alligator in Lake Conway? That it must have overwintered there? When I was younger, there were no armadillos in Missouri. And you're probably saying to yourself, there are no alligators in Fayetteville. Now, yet. There's time. I want to investigate those Arkansas alligators. I don't think you think about Arkansas. As a person who moved to Arkansas, I didn't think about Arkansas and alligators until much later. Because obviously, who would move there if you knew giant apex lizards were waiting on you? Am I right? Sure, you can have all the rice that you can shake a stick at, but you have to fight that guy. They're a marsh creature. I don't know. No one did the math on that. But there's an alligator season here, uh, which only a few states have an alligator season. I think that's kind of neat. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of highlight a lot of Arkansas stuff. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you're really not supposed to. You can keep uh, exotic animals as pets with the right licensing. Uh, until recently, you know the come and go on uh, college and township? The Reptile Museum was right behind it. Did you get anybody ever be there? I have seen that, but it's moved. Here. It's moved down uh, down township. But um, what would you think would be in a reptile museum? It was called the Reptile Museum. <laughs> I don't think it exists anymore. Uh, it it, it uh, might have moved down township, but I think it's pretty well closed. Uh, Is it? Well, we'll check that out. It's down there, down there by Greg and Township. When you hear a museum, you'd think like fossils, maybe, bones, facts. No. You walk in there, it's just reptiles, wall-to-wall -wall cages of reptiles, big ones, little ones. That guy had a 22-foot anaconda that was like this big around. He had a caiman, which is a small crocodile, in a, in a stock tank in the back room. You know, I suggested that. He disabused me of that notion. Yeah, he had some really enormous turtles. Uh, Caymans are not from here, though. They're from Latin America. When you go to Latin America, if you're in the military, when you get off the plane, they show you a movie of all the things in the country that will kill you. And they show you Caymans. And then, like, the next day, you go on a hike and you walk through a river, and everything that bumps you, you know what you're thinking. That's a Cayman. I'm going to get bit by a small, but still apex predator. They do. They do. There are no leopards in Panama that they can find. I think they've gone extinct. Yeah, but they're in South America. True enough. Same as, same as, you know, same as the game. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your ideas? If you want to, if you want to explore that, what are your ideas that, that you have that you're thinking about? What brought you to this room? besides the scintillating prospect of an afternoon spent with, with our community learning about film. Yeah, I'm going to lower that ego expectation. Anybody? Donald, yeah. Two for two. But I hear these jokes about it forever, and even jokes with it, some of the characters that I used to work with the late Sporty Baker had that character. Uh huh. We had a lot of old squad characters in there that were sunk, and I always wanted to put a video together about it. And like I say, I talked about it forever, and the other night my wife comes out and tells me, she said, Oh, by the way, I signed you up for a copy of your new video. Nice. And I thought, Hey, is she trying to shut me up? Yeah. <laughs> put up or shut up. Well done. I'm not out in the world right. Yeah. yeah. Have you? Can you think of a subject that's not on YouTube? Anybody? Have you ever looked up something on YouTube and not found it? Mm -hmm. 
so many, but there's, there's not a dearth of them. There's an overpopulation of them that makes it difficult. Yeah. yeah. Who likes what? But there, are, but there are certainly Pokemon videos out there, right? Like a million different things on how to do it. I had a, you ever heard of Couchsurf? You guys ever heard of Couchsurf, the app Couchsurf? Here's how Couchsurf works. You sign up to Couchsurf and then say you want to go someplace. So you open the app and you check that city and then all the people who are opening their homes to complete strangers to come and Couchsurf are listed there and you find the one who looks least like a taxidermist serial murderer <laughs> and then you contact them and you stay with them. So I joined Count Surf because I thought, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, yeah. And then a guy got a hold of me and he said, I'm a really bad stand-up comedian who just travels across the country doing open mic nights. Can I stay at your house? And I was like, boy, howdy. I would really like you to be here. <laughs> so he came and stayed with me. And he said, have you ever heard of Critical Role? And I said, no, what's Critical Role? This was several years ago. Critical Role is uh, a Dungeons and Dragons group that plays Dungeons and Dragons, okay? A few years after they created their group, they decided they would videotape their, their gaming sessions, okay? This is what their, their until recently, now they've made so much money, uh, they are, and they just started a Kickstarter where they're gonna do an animated Dungeons and Dragons movie. But before that, I want to, if anyone has any anxiety issues, this description is going to be pretty thrilling. You might just want to take a few deep breaths before I can, are you ready? Okay. It's two tables with three people at each table and a dungeon master that the camera then cuts between the dungeon master and the two tables. I can feel the adrenaline building in this room. I <laughs> then the people at the table will say what their characters are doing, and the dungeon master will say the results of what their characters did. So it's basically Dungeons and Dragons, except somebody videotaped it, so if you like couldn't make it, you could still get the full experience of watching people talk about their in imaginary friend characters and have another guy say what would happen. And I thought, sure, those videos have like 11 million views a piece and they're four hours long of watching a stationary camera, six people in a dungeon master. What I'm trying to say is if you have an idea, there's an audience out there. At the end of this year, there will be, currently there, there are two and a high fraction billion people who are unique monthly YouTube users. By the end of this year, they're anticipating three billion or more users on YouTube. If you have an idea, someone on earth wants to see it and share with you. I don't want to pep talk you too much, but I, I really feel like in our community that has set all of this available to us where all you'd have to do kind of is show up and hold your phone. This is the perfect environment to create those kind of videos. And almost anything you want to do, there's an audience out there for it, whether it's skills or history or things on the bait shop and the characters that you know. There is something out there. There are so many different uh, very successful, even Netflix, Hulu, that started as web series. You guys ever heard of Letterkenny? It's in Canada. It's got quirky comedy about these guys. He's a farmer in Canada. It literally is just a character-based comedy about all these people that this guy knew in his small town in Canada. Letterkenny. Let me just, uh, if you have um, young ears, it's probably inappropriate for them. That's what I'm saying. You probably don't want to bring your clergyman into the room when you're watching Letterkenny. But it's hysterical, and it started as a guy who got like a real small grant from the Canadian 
CBC, right? Canadian Broadcast? Something. Yeah. And he made some, and it got so popular, he, it went from being a guy on YouTube. He now has just finished his second show about Canadian hockey players. Again, not to plug it too hard, but it's pretty funny. That guy started on YouTube. He probably didn't, I mean, he had all of Canada's pro. In my imagination, all of Canada is roughly at the same level of cool as Fayetteville. I don't know if we can hold that up, but, you know, the CBC gave him grant money to let him develop this, have some time to write good, good content, uh, good dialogue. He made a really good thing of it. Our community has given us this opportunity to, you know, have a green room, have a, have a soundproof room. You don't have to do video, you know. Lots and lots of YouTube content is podcasts and audio books. Uh, pure audio, if you, if you are feeling like, well, I don't want to put my image out there. Okay. A lot of it's point of view filming. So you, there's a, there's a, there is a man out there, and again, I know I'm kind of fanning the flames here, but have you ever heard of Chef John? Food wishes? Get a chance today. He is amazing. Chef John was a guy, he went to the CIA, not the spooky one, but the one that is the Culinary uh, Institute of America, became a chef, worked in San Francisco at a couple of Michelin restaurants, starts a YouTube channel. He's got 70 billion subscribers. It's something, I'm joking, it's something insane, it's huge. He, you don't see Chef John, you hear his voice and you see his hands. That's his whole thing. You never, it, it is so depersonalized from him, it's about the food and the craft of making food. It's wildly popular. Anything that you could think of that you would want to produce, there's somebody out there doing it, but you can do that better. You're much more personable than that guy. I mean, baseline. So, a couple things. I'm just going to be fully transparent with you guys. Um, last week, I came to this class, and no one came. So... Yeah, if I had human emotions, they would have been crushed and then kicked. Finally, 10 minutes after 2, a woman walked in here and she sat down and she said, oh, so you know, what can you teach me? And I said, well, I can teach you all about YouTube. I can teach you how to use YouTube and how to set up your account. And she goes, that's awesome. I want to learn that. And so we sat for a while, just one-on-one, -on -one, just talking. I uh, showed her how to set up an account because she'd only gone on YouTube when people would send her stuff on Facebook that was a YouTube, was a YouTube video. Uh, and then about 10, 15 minutes into it, she said, this is really good. I, I don't really use YouTube. It was that kind of day. So uh, this week, I had kind of anticipated the same population coming in here. So I prepared like 20 minutes of material, and they booked it for two hours. So... When I'm asking for your feedback, it's just because uh, what I really was going to co uh, cover today was you click this button that creates a, an account, and you go shoot some video, and that button that says upload, you click that button, and you bring that file up, and now you have content on your channel. Hey, we have some amazing stuff over there. You can use everything from lights to microphones, and they have the same thing up the, s up the street at the city, which will actually teach you how to do it as long as you don't have any open warrants, and you look like a trustworthy crowd, so I'm going to assume you don't, because it's right across the street from the police station. They park there sometimes. Uh, and then I was going to open the floor to your ideas. So I'm opening the floor to your ideas. Yes, ma'am. What would you like to know? Everything, everything? They have their whole, they have a whole, are you familiar with analytics? Okay, so just like Google Analytics, there's a YouTube Analytics. That's available to you when you hit a certain threshold. There are ways you can use it coming in and you can see reports on other stuff now, uh, but YouTube has a, has a feature called YouTube Creator. Uh, when you get to a certain threshold of hours and subscribers, hours watched and subscribers, they open that to you and you have a lot more resources where you can track your own analytics and uh, I think you can tie those to your Google to your Google Analytics as well. So you can monitor your site traffic, blog traffic, and YouTube traffic all together. Yeah? Ma'am. Kind of on the back of that, my problem with what's going to come out of your is I have too many ideas. 
Yeah. That's uh, what I was going to suggest on that is I'm not sure how open those are to look at other people's content. What I was going to suggest is finding something, maybe ranking your top five or ten, going through, doing a little research, and see what the numbers are around those. Because you know every vi every video has a views. has a views, yeah. And a lot of those guys do from views to monetization. That doesn't work when you start. Yes, ma'am. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. So my information might be old. So my understanding, there's a lot of, and you'll hear this from content creators, that the rules, this would be like the caveat. The rules sometimes change, and things get demonetized sort of capriciously. I don't know if that holds true, but I, I have seen enough of that. Uh, people saying like, yeah, I said the word coronavirus, this video got, you know, had 115,000 views and it got demonetized. Oh. Yeah, there's weird things and then the way things are monetized changes uh, from time to time. And again, I'm going to review those this week and I was going to talk about that next week. But my understanding, correct me if I'm way out of bounds. You need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time before you get any money. And you can, even without, there's, there's some strategies you can do around that to still make YouTube a side hustle with merch and affiliate marketing, marketing, uh, affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of those out there. There's some people who are, are you familiar with, with video game walkthroughs? Yeah? They'll show a video game, a video game will come out, and someone will take their, take their game in their controller and show you the game. I mean, they might be 10 or 11 hours long, or longer, where they just go through a game, the whole features of a video game. Those are very, very popular. People love the, their video games. Anything around video games is very, you know, if you go out there and see the content that's, that's amassed around it, you will, you will understand that is, a, that is a verdant field upon which to sow the seeds of your creativity. Throwing some metaphors out there at you. No extra cost. Just a service that comes with the library. Yeah. Right on. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Can you speak up? Yeah. So within 30 seconds, people know whether they're going to stay on a video. So most videos have the most uh, most touches is 30 seconds or less. Usually 15 minutes or less. Uh, but they also have a short content where, and, and you'll see this a lot, where people take uh, videos from TikTok or from other. Uh, it used to be vines and stuff, and they would put those on there that might just be a couple minutes long. So most creators have long and short material because the short material acts almost like a teaser trailer or uh, you know kind of a marketing uh, mechanism. And then they have longer trailers. One of the reasons they like the 15-minute trailers is, you know, YouTube is an ad-driven business, and so if you don't have a premium account, it's only $19.74. It changes the whole experience. Get a premium account. I'll come back to that in a second. If you don't have a premium account, normally there's an advertisement at the beginning of the video. For a 15-minute video, there's also usually one like at the seven or eight-minute mark, and so that's why they like that longer content. And the longer content you have, uh, certainly your hours, your viewed hours, build up that much faster. Long, 
long as anything over 10 usually on their algorithm as I understand it. Anybody heard anything different? Because they may have changed that too. All of us are smarter than one of us. And definitely all of you guys are smarter than me. So I'm just going to lower that bar a little bit and make it easy. So, uh, they Also, there are people who do really short content uh, that really is like a teaser. One of my favorite cooking shows is a, is a Korean lady who goes by the handle of Mong Chi, which means Warhammer. And it's awesome because it's this wonderful, adorable, 64-year-old Korean woman named Warhammer who makes <laughs> traditional Korean food. And she'll put out 30, 30 to 50 second uh, videos that show something very specific about this kind of food or that preparation, or I went to a Korean market and this is the stuff that's in season and stuff like that. So I think there's a there's a good mark between the two, ma'am. Thank you. You're yeah. Next question. Uh huh. So many views. So she's been doing this since it almost started. Can I tell you her story? Because it's impressive. Mong Chi uh, got divorced. Let me back up. When I went to college, I went to Mizzou. 80% of the South Korean government, that was the estimate, went to Mizzou for some reason. Uh, it's a thing. So there was a very large Korean community. There was a Korean community. Let's say very large for Missouri standards. There was a Korean community in Columbia. There were no Korean restaurants. So when there was a birthday or a holiday, they would ask this woman to cook food. And a large portion of the Korean population would come and, and dine with her. Fast forward a few years. She gets divorced. She gets addicted to World of Warcraft, thus the Warhammer. That was, her, that, was her, uh, that was her handle in Warcraft. She is, uh, she's like a, she's some sort of mental counselor. That's her, that's her day job. And her kids were really getting worried about her because she would work all day and come home and play World of Warcraft all night and get like an hour's sleep and go back and do it over and over. And they said, hey, you got to find something else to do, man. Get a hobby. You're burning out at both ends. And she said, well, I'm going to, I think I'll do a cooking video. And they go, everybody loves your cooking videos. Well, she is now the world's Korean auntie. And she's been doing this, I think, since 2009, so just shortly after YouTube was created. I think her, her subscribers are in the millions. And for any video uh, that she has produced, I, I would say you're going to be hard pressed not to find tens of thousands of views on anything she has created. So how does she make money? Well, she uses those channels to popularize her cookbooks. Uh, she's produced physical hardback books and her merch. Uh, then when you have you know, 10 million subscribers, then it's roughly, last, last thing I heard was when you're at the threshold, it's roughly one penny per subscriber viewed. Excuse me. It's one penny per view watches your video. So if you had, you know, if you put out a video every two weeks that gets 67,000, you know, 67,000 views, and that took her a long time to build to that, but, you know, she's making 12, 13,000 a month off the videos plus everything else that goes with that, you know. Kind of cool. She doesn't, she doesn't like have her own cookware set or anything like that. She mostly cooks Korean food and then writes books about cooking Korean food. She's so popular now that she gets invitations to come to potluck dinners from everywhere. So every once in a while, she'll be like, I came to New Zealand for this potluck dinner, and I brought pork ribs, you know, and this week we're in Amsterdam. So that's my dream, just to have people invite me over. You heard my story about couch surf. That did not work out well. Super scary app. Don't really recommend it. That, it gets weird quick. The comedian seemed like a nice guy. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. But she has built an amazing base. And uh, uh, 
I, I've kind of looked into her background a little bit because she is she's like the trusted Korean auntie now so that parents when they send their children off to college know they won't starve to death because they can go watch Monchi. And she, if you get a chance, again, she's one of my favorite channels. She'll go to a Korean market or an Asian market and show you how to pick out this food that, you know, if you're from middle America, South Central USA, you, you probably don't have a lot of experience with determining good kimchi or the different kinds of tofu. And she, she walks you through that. Kind of a neat, kind of a neat thing. She's very much, though, about her personality and bringing it in there. And she has a, she has a certain uh, production value that, that she does. Most of these are, are videoed in her apartment. Uh, and so I'm thinking it's very near Central Park in New York City. Uh, so sometimes she'll, she'll grow plants, uh, perilla leaves, for instance, on her balcony and bring them in and make some sort of uh, dish where they wrap food in leaf and steam. Dolma, sort of, but the Korean version. And uh, she'll have like flowers that are accessorized with her clothing. And she will have usually a hat or tiara. So it's just visually, it's very arresting. I think it would be very interesting without that. But the additional touches from a, from a visual standpoint make it, make it super, super cool. Yeah, she's one of my favorites. If you get a chance, that's really a good one. I'm going to share this one with you. You guys ever heard of primitive technology? Have you watched those videos? There's a guy. This is why I say anything that you do, anything you come up with, it's going to be a winner. Just believe in it. There's a guy in Australia. Uh, he started this channel called Primitive Technology. He would go to the woods in Australia, and he would like start by fumbling around and picking up a rock. Then he would chip the rock, flake it, polish it, now he'd have an axe head. Then he would go break off a limb, affix rock to limb, and now he'd have an axe. Then he would chop down a tree. There is no sound. There is no narration. There is no human interaction. It's a pair of hands and a rock and then a tree. And then he builds a fire. And then he builds a kiln, and then he made bricks, and then he used, have you ever heard of bog iron? That's where the you know, water turns orange because there's a microorganism that is metabolizing iron. Then he gathered bog iron and built a smelter and built, he made a knife. And he just goes through these things. Well, it took him, he built different kinds of shelters. He showed how to make cloth, how to make shoes, how to make a bow and arrow, how to make a sling. He did all these things, and then he demonstrated his, his competence at it. So it took a long time. And he said it would take maybe some of those things took a whole year of weekends, because he had a regular day job. So he would go out and keep filming on and on. Those videos, which the only, there is nothing in those videos except a guy in the woods. You know, All of the noise is just bugs and birds. You know, 12, 12 million views on watching a guy build a hut. Making pottery. Making pottery as basically as you could from he started with mud on the side of the creek to I've now got a kiln. Oh, and I made all of the tiles for the roof of this hut that I built starting with this rock. It, it's just an amazing visual uh, journey. If you get a chance, it's a, it's Probably the best one. And that's a single guy. There's another group of people who do something similar, but theirs are, are a little different. OK, guys, now you know how to create a channel. You know where your resources are to find cameras and equipment to make your content. You know what to look for if you have a similar idea. Short, and, and I've seen that, that there, that there is a push toward short, but m most of the savage people have short and long content, but nothing really over 15 minutes. That's kind of a cutoff place. Uh, and then the other part that I was going to talk about, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this till next week, uh, really is on monetization, because get all that foundation built before you worry about you know, quitting your day job.
Unless you're like me and every waking moment is thinking about quitting your day job. <laughs> Joking. I love my day job. Yeah, so what else can I do for you guys this afternoon? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, there are quite a few. People tend to go across all social media platforms. So a lot of the YouTube creators will have an Instagram presence, a TikTok presence, Facebook presence, Pinterest presence, YouTube presence. So they have, you know, they put that pin out there. They got another, you know, six, seven million followers out there. Pinterest still links to their YouTube, Facebook. Sometimes uh, they like a, will live stream, or and they will do the. Uh, help me. Well, I've just lost my vocabulary. This is a bad technical moment. <laughs> they will simulcast that on on you on on Facebook, so they can uh, increase their yeah increase that footprint. It's wild what you can do there. Have you guys heard of Mr. Beast? He's like, he's like the top guy on YouTube. He now has more money than, well, they're printing more money just for Mr. Beast. <laughs> they're probably shoving it in briefcases right now so he can walk around like Scrooge McDuck. That guy very rarely is there truly a case of a self-made millionaire. There are so many things that are external. And even in this case, obviously, he didn't in, in, invent the whole platform and things like that. But this, this man is worth tens, hundreds of millions of dollars. He, at his request, celebrities, musicians will drop what they're doing to come and be in his videos because he's so popular. He makes such, uh, such amazingly popular content. That's just a dude who started with a camera and made something amazing out of it. Uh, looking at the numbers, when I encourage people to explore anything online, anything YouTube, any, any of those sort of kind of side, sort of hobby, sort of could be how I buy an island. All of those things, when people are sincere about what they're talking about and they produce this content, when you're talking about three billion people by early next year being your available, your, your available population in, in your market, you need like 0.001% of those people to think you're awesome or at least tolerable or want to hang out with you half an hour once a week to make a significant amount of money. Just run the, just run the math on that, you know. Three billion, move those decimal places over a couple, and you can see even at one penny per person, it doesn't take a huge fraction of that until you're on a boat in the Mediterranean with your followers. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Went dark quick, but I think we all end up on a boat in the Mediterranean. It's probably inescapable. I'm willing to find out. And I hope you get to, too. Yes, ma'am. So once a week, uh, most people talk about going a minimum of once a week while they're building their channel. If you look at some of the more established channels, they might go a couple weeks or even once a month. Mong Chi, who I was mentioning, she puts up one long video a month and she might do one short a month as well. She doesn't put out a lot of content now. Early in her career, getting people on board, she put out a lot more stuff. And a lot of people who are, who, who build themselves as influencers, you know, they're putting out content multiple times a day Again, right, so what else do you do? Nothing, nothing else. 
this is what I do. And I, but I think to establish a channel, looking at uh, the reading I've done, research I've done, once a week, good place to start. You're being consistent. And, and the thing is, you, you do need consistency. That is another part of the algorithm. You, they need you to be dependable. You know, they're running a business too. And even though it's kind of an open, an open world, an ecosystem where you know, there really aren't a lot of rules, but they do need you, if, if, if they're gonna pay you, they need you to make enough content so that the ads, you know, the ad holds up, the algorithm threads. Uh huh. I, I think spacing out works better, from what I've seen. I've never seen someone do. I've never seen someone just drop all their content at once, though. But some people put out. Uh, I, I have seen things where people will put out uh, a short, a, f a few shorts about varied topics, and maybe this long one, uh, and then hint to what the additional content that will be released will be uh, in the short term. Uh, I've never really seen somebody, have you seen somebody drop all of their content, their, their backlog of content at one time? Right, right. Yeah. So you can establish a presence right there. I, I haven't read on, uh, I don't know anyone who has done that strategy. Uh, that might be, yeah, maybe that's really a good idea. I don't know. I, I don't have an answer. I'm sorry. A hundred? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's true across Google. It's hard to, it's, so, so, so there are, just like anything else where you're being searched for, there's that search engine optimization and keywords that are going to, move you up in what gets displayed or drop you down, and there's there's a lot of stuff there. It's Byzantine. It seems Byzantine. Yes, ma'am. You can. So you could set up your own subscribers. Yeah. Have you ever heard of fake Amazon reviews and what happens to people when that fakery is revealed? Long term, just gonna say, I'm not. First off, let's applaud that creativity. You're going places. Getting caught's the downside, and everybody gets caught in 2022. Exactly. Or try, try to use it for good. Or not too bad. Or don't get caught. <laughs> yes. That's down the road. We're going to need some lawyers in this room before we start down that subject matter. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are literally a whole group of uh, channels of guys from prison. That sounds like maybe not the Those guys have some... Uh, their stories do lack whimsy, <laughs> but they are very interesting. <clears throat> no, 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 more like once you're there, how to live in an environment of incar incarceration. And it, there are some people out there who are very interesting speakers who have had some horrifying life experiences that they're willing to share via YouTube. So it's everything from vegetable gardening to what I did last year on my summer vacation in the joint. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out there. Yes, ma'am. So how does the comments and likes program to your to your rankings? Like they don't just like strictly on views for subscribers. It's also likes. So it's the enthusiasm around it. We'll talk about that more. I need to I need to reread on the algorithm this week to tell you about that. But right. Uh, subscribes, uh, subscribers, likes, and overall views all, all count in that algorithm separately. I don't know what the weighting is on, on those. Anybody in the room? No? And again, we're going to talk about that next week, uh, but none of that revenue starts until, until your 1,000 subscriber, 4,000 hours of view time. The last I read.
Have you heard any different? Okay. So that one's probably still good. I don't know that much about that. Uh, I've, I've talked with a guy who did some. Uh, they get, so sponsorship, you can, you can, so if you're watching YouTube now, usually they do a plug for Raycons, let's say. You guys, that's a big one right now is those Raycon headphones. Uh, and they will say, Raycon sponsored my video today. And they will talk a little bit about Raycon. And even if you have premium, I was gonna come back to premium. Let me, let me interject. Premium YouTube, if you don't have that, it makes it so much better. It's under $20 a month, and then you have, other than the sponsor placements, you don't have any more advertisements. So it's, a, it's just a video instead of an advertisement, and then four minutes of video, and then an advertisement, and then, you know, it's just the video. It makes it so much smoother. Uh, lost my original train of thought with that inter session. Well done. Thank you. So they, uh, yeah, you can sponsor videos. Usually when those get sponsored, uh, there is a disclaimer, I am being sponsored by this product because you know a lot of people do product reviews and product placement in their videos, so they try to avoid conflict of interest. But uh, again, I don't know kind of at what point does that become viable for the individual? How, how much how much of a viewer base do you have to have before Raycon will come give me some Raycon money? I hope it's pretty low. I'd like some of that Raycon money. <laughs> Plus, you might be able to get some of those earbuds for free. Have you guys seen those? They're awesome. Feels like I'm being sponsored by Raycon all of a sudden, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See, I'm a natural. I could do this. Send me money, Raycon. <laughs> I think so. HelloFresh is in a lot of my cooking channels. But Raycon actually uh, sponsored one of the Adam Ragusias, where he does. Uh, Adam Ragusia was a guy on NPR, uh, quit being a reporter on NPR. Now has a YouTube channel where he does food and fitness and stuff. He went out and tapped uh, a hazelnut tree in his backyard and made hazel, hazelnut syrup. Did you guys know you could do that? Before Adam Ragusia did it, I didn't know you could do that. Basically, any tree that doesn't have acorns or is a pine, uh, you can tap those and, it, and then boil it down on your stove, and it's like maple syrup, only he made hazelnut syrup. Just wanted to share that with you, because it's kind of awesome. He also found a, a mutton barbecue joint. Never had mutton barbecue. There's one in Kentucky. So on the way to the GIF factory, we're right there. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Maybe in barbecue, though. And there's a very specific reason why there is a mutton barbecue joint in western Kentucky. Vegans could be anywhere. <laughs> mutton barbecue is, there, there aren't that many people, really overall in the world, uh, who mutton is a part of their cuisine. But all these Welsh coal miners went to Kentucky and after mining coal all day, what they really needed was a good mutton barbecue sandwich. So now they have a mutton barbecue joint. Yeah, maybe. I've had a couple. Uh, they were terrible. I'm just going to be honest. I judged myself harshly. So I turned those off. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna working on this one. I'm working on this one on Arkansas. Because... Well, just here in the Midwest, you know, you can do so many things. Do you know where 80% of all horseradish is raised? It's not Arkansas. Pulling you down the wrong path on that one. It's Collinsville, Illinois. Collinsville, Illinois, you say? The home to Michael Stipe of R REM? Yes, that Collinsville, Illinois. And they have an international horseradish festival every year where you could get horseradish ice cream if you had lost your mind, for instance. Horseradish Festival. Have you guys ever been to the to the mule jumping in Pea Ridge? Anybody seen that? 
It's amazing, isn't it? The, a mule, and they have different, mules come in different height classes. The big mules are so, un, as a Hobbit American, I feel like I can confidently share this with you. The big mules are so big that I can walk under it. And so they bring these mules out, and then they have like basically a high jump bar. Because I thought it would be something really spirited and exciting of seeing a mule jump, but that's not what it is. They walk the mule out, and they're like, jump it. And then he flat-footed high jumps like 9, 10 feet. It's phenomenal. Yeah, that's a great little festival to go to. We have the World uh, Squirrel Cook-Off Championships in Bentonville on Labor Day. If you guys haven't been to one of those, and you're a fancier of squirrel, which is delicious, and we forget about that, but it's the second most harvested meat in most Midwestern states after deer. And the classic coon supper. Classic coon supper, where's that at? That is in, oh no. Is that in Hannibal? Because that's a Mark Twain thing. No, it's, oh. it's something that they used to, all the politicians had to go to and show up at, and it was a huge thing, yeah. Oh, I'm going to go research that one. That one's good. I can't believe that one's good. Really good. Yeah. Yeah, we often have a spinach festival here. It's just going to go around with stuff like that. It's just going to awesome. Grape festival. That one's been going on since 1896. Only really broke one time before COVID. Yeah, that was COVID. Yeah, during I think during World War II, there was a they stopped having it in World War II for a couple of years. I think, but they have grape ice cream at that one. If you've never had that, that's kind of amazing. Great spaghetti. Those ladies are awesome with their kid, chicken and spaghetti. It's in Gillette. Gillette, Arkansas. Where is Gillette, Arkansas? I have no idea. So now there's two things. I'm I'm trying to work that into a razor joke. That. Good luck. Thanks. Can I tell you my razor joke? You guys ready for this? Okay. I was working at the university the past couple of years. And uh, universities do a lot of fundraising, okay? It's integral to this joke. So I was in a, uh, <clears throat> I was in a meeting with the uh, U of A Foundation, and they do, they have an enormous database of all the don donors and uh, alumni who they can hopefully convert to donors. And they were changing the software that they're using to a product called Razor's Edge with an S like fundraiser and edge. Now, I was in a room with about this many people, and I, it dawned on me how funny this situation was and how I should exploit it for its humor potential. So I said, I've heard a lot of puns in my life that turned out to be dad jokes, but razor's edge is the first pun that I've heard that turned out to be a Somerset Mom joke, and it was crickets. <laughs> Nobody laughed at my Somerset mom joke. <laughs> A lot of people, in fact, no one, no one got that. No one got that one. Bill Murray made the movie Razor's Edge based on the beloved novel by Somerset. Just me. Thanks, Bill Murray. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, that was a really bad joke. I delighted in it and laughed and laughed. My coworkers have not forgiven me. That's about all I have for today. Healthy enthusiasm, excellent equipment. The world is your stage. It's very easy to set up a channel. There are support groups and meetups depending on what kind of content you want to put together. And next time, we'll meet and talk about how to make money to some, some degree. So is there anything else we can talk about today? I know we've hit a lot of bases. Anybody? Did you learn anything today? Anybody? It's okay if you didn't. I did. I didn't know it was really that easy. It's super easy. Pardon, ma'am? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let me turn this off now.